yet more U.S.-driven escalations toward war in the Middle East. Well, it finally happened. The scores of attacks on U.S. troops in the Middle East in response to Israel's U.S.-backed atrocities in Gaza have gotten some Americans killed, just as critics of U.S. foreign policy have been saying would happen for months. Anti-war's Dave DeCamp, among those who have long warned of this eventuality, writes the following, quote, Three U.S. troops were killed by an overnight drone attack in northeastern Jordan, the first Americans to die by enemy fire in the region since President Biden threw the U.S.'s weight behind the Israeli onslaught in Gaza. According to CNN, one-way attack drones hit Tower 22, a small U.S. outpost in Jordan near the Syrian border. Over 30 troops were also wounded in the attack. Since mid-October, U.S. bases in Iraq and Syria have come under attack over 150 times in response to U.S. support for the Israeli slaughter in Gaza. The overnight drone attack in Jordan appears to be the first time Tower 22 was targeted. End quote. The Biden administration immediately claimed the attack was backed by Iran, with profoundly influential news agencies like AP and Reuters regurgitating this claim as established fact in their headlines immediately thereafter. As DeCamp notes in the aforementioned article, back in October, a U.S. official acknowledged to CNN that there's actually a persistent intelligence gap as to how much these Shia militias are in fact beholden to the orders of Tehran. But apparently, this attack being linked to Iran is now being treated as established gospel truth anyway. This attribution has allowed perpetually war-horny Republican senators Lindsey Graham, Tom Cotton, and John Cornyn to call on Biden to attack Iran directly. U.S. officials actually told the press last week that Biden would consider direct strikes on Iran if and when the attacks on U.S. troops led to American deaths, with the New York Times reporting the Biden administration knew it was only a matter of time before this occurred. In a statement on the attacks, Biden said the U.S. will hold all those responsible to account at a time and in a manner of our choosing, meaning yet another military escalation in the Middle East is on its way under this murderous administration. A full-scale war with Iran would be the absolute worst-case scenario resulting from the violence which erupted in the Middle East this past October, potentially with mass deaths on a scale that would make what's been happening in Gaza look like child's play. In that same statement, Biden said the U.S. troops who were killed in the, quote, despicable and wholly unjust attack died working to fight terrorism, which is, of course, ridiculous. People who live in the Middle East have far more legitimacy attacking U.S. troops in resistance to a U.S.-backed genocide than U.S. troops have in being in the Middle East to begin with, and the U.S. military presence they attacked is there to shore up geostrategic control, not to fight terror. As Aris Rusinos explained in a new article for Unheard, the U.S. base by the Jordan-Syria border that was struck by Iraqi forces functions as a support base for America's Al-Tanf garrison, a sprawling deconfliction zone, read, illegal military occupation, in Syria, which the U.S. has for years been using to disrupt Iranian activities in the region and help Israel carry out its constant airstrikes in Syria. Fighting terrorism is just the pretense for the U.S. military presence in the region. As always, the real reason is to facilitate the geostrategic domination of the U.S. empire. Those three U.S. military personnel didn't die fighting terrorism. They didn't even die advancing the interests of ordinary Americans. The real reason they died was summed up nicely by responsible statecrafts, Trita Parsi, quote, They didn't die defending U.S. interests. They died defending Biden's refusal to press Israel for a ceasefire. Their lives were put at risk by Biden to defend Israel's ability to continue its carnage in Gaza, end quote. Parsi has spent months arguing that the only thing that can de-escalate the rapidly expanding hostilities in the Middle East is a ceasefire in Gaza, since that's what they all ultimately arise from. The massive increase in attacks on U.S. troops, the Yemeni blockade in the Red Sea, the brinkmanship with Hezbollah in Lebanon, and the skyrocketing tensions with Iran are all the direct result of Israel's massacre in Gaza and the opposition there too. Instead of pushing for a ceasefire, the U.S. is preparing to send Israel 50 fighter jets and 12 Apache helicopters in preparation for the next war, while stepping toward the horrifying prospect of a hot war with Iran. 
Meanwhile, Nancy Pelosi is saying there needs to be an FBI investigation into people calling for a ceasefire because they might be Russian secret agents. Every U.S. military fatality in the Middle East is the fault of the U.S. government for putting them there. U.S. troops shouldn't be in the Middle East at all, and the U.S. has no legitimacy in retaliating against efforts to kick them out of the region by the people who live there. Iraqi militias have 100% legitimacy in attacking U.S. troops in the Middle East during a U.S.-backed genocide, and the U.S. has zero legitimacy in retaliating. To the managers of the U.S. Empire, get out of the Middle East. Just get the fuck out. Stop backing a genocide in Gaza, stop murdering people to shore up domination of world resources, and leave. Leave before you unleash something far worse than the nightmare you've already inflicted upon our species.